Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I thought I would challenge myself to use this inexpensive watercolor set from Crayola. This is an eight color washable watercolor set that I bought at my local grocery store for $3.41, which I later found out is highway robbery because you can find the same watercolor sets in other stores or online for under $2. It's super inexpensive. I'm also going to be using the brush that comes in the watercolor set. And this is a really, really cheap brush, but I'm gonna see how well I can get it to work. So when you first open up the watercolor set, that brush is really stiff and um, it's, it's like it's got some sort of gel on it or something that make it made the bristles harden. So I just got that wet in a cup of water and then I'm wiping it off on a paper towel. And that softens up those bristles enough that I can start using it. I also took my Mr. Bottle, just a spray bottle, and sprayed some water onto all of these colors. They recommend you do that on the back of the packaging, so I went ahead and did that for sure. Then I set that aside to let the water soak in. I'm going to be using this stamp set from Lawn Fawn today called Let's Barbecue, or Let's BBQ. And I thought it'd just be really cute to uh, paint in some of the images that are on that are in the set. So I have some Strathmore watercolor paper. It is cut to five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm stamping the images and the grading in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This black ink is a pigment ink that when it dries, it's permanent and it's waterproof. So it's really great for doing these watercolor images. I love that the stamp set also has these cute little smiley faces and there's three of them. And since I have three images on my watercolor piece here, I'm gonna go ahead and use all three uh, little smiley faces. There's a regular smiley face, a winking smiley, and then also a little smiley with a tongue. So here I am mixing some colors on the palette off to the side. I'm using the lid of the, the watercolor set as a palette. And the thing that I really noticed that I was going to have to do is I was going to have to mix my own colors. These are really primary colors. They're not toned. They don't have um, any variations. So I really had to mix the colors. I'm going to speed up the video process here a little bit just so um, I can really show the whole entire process, but I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the painting as well. So the, the thing that I noticed with these watercolors is they actually aren't quite as bad as I thought they were going to be. I was really skeptical, but um, I discovered that it actually wasn't so bad. Um, they do dry back quite a bit. They don't keep, they're a really bright color. When they, once they're dry on, on the paper, they really, really dry back, which is sometimes nice because they're very transparent. So you can get some really fun watercolor looks with them. But um, compared to some of my more expensive watercolor sets, I could really tell the difference between um, these paints and my other sets. So I'm mixing a lot of colors together and then I'll be transferring them over to my project. So if you guys can hear a cat meowing, that would be Sophie. Hey Soph, come here. Now she's not gonna come over here. Um, anyway, so I'm mixing up a brown color for the bread on the ha hamburger and also on the hot dog. And I also wanted to mention that the, the main thing that I noticed with these watercolors and the main thing that's really different, um, for one thing, the only thing I'm changing is the watercolor set. I'm still using nice paper. Um, I'm still using a nice ink for when I stamp the images. The only thing I've changed up is the watercolor set and the brush. So I really feel like this is a good representation of the difference between this inexpensive watercolor set and one that is more expensive. I uh, noticed that as everything had dried, that the pigment sort of just like settles into the paper and I get sort of this mottled look. It's not smooth. Hey, I'm not talking to you. Why are you meowing? Um, it's not super, super smooth. If you can see that there's like little, it looks like it was printed on a printer or like it's just not smooth color. And when I use Distress Ink even, or I use a different watercolor set, um, it looks very, very smooth across this particular watercolor paper. So I know that that's the difference. That being said, for a greeting card, I don't know that it really matters so much, you know. Um, I don't know if a lot of you card, ma card makers are like me, but I mostly send cards to other card makers because I know that they'll appreciate it. So when I send those off, you know, 
probably they would notice that there's a little bit of a difference in quality, but it's not a huge difference. And for under $2, I mean, this is actually pretty great. So I just, I did want to mention that. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a background here. So I'm wetting the surface of my paper with some water. Then I'm going to bring in a really, really pale blue and it's going to sort of wick away and create a nice background. Now I noticed with this color that the, the paint really didn't move too much. Um, once it was on the paper, it did not want to move around at all. Even when I had my project tilted, um, it really didn't want to move around. So I notice that this is really transparent, um, all of that blue, and it's drying back quite a bit. I'm going to hit it with my heat tool here in a minute and dry it even more and then put another layer on top. And that's how you can get that really cool watercolor look, is layering transparent colors. So I'm just putting a little bit of a really watered down black, gray on here. And then I'm going to add some more blue over the top once that blue is dry. And you'll notice I get that really fun, like harsh edge, but that layered look that's really popular with watercolor. And that's what I really wanted to do. I also wanted to mention that as you add more water on top of areas you've already painted, it really picks up that color and moves it around again. It reactivates the watercolor even more than other watercolors that I've tried. So all of that painting and the water kind of softened some of the stamped edges. So I really wanted to um, re-emphasize those. So I'm just using a black pen for that, just adding a little more sharp lines. And then I took a white gel pen. This is a Jelly Roll pen. And I add a little bit of white detail on the sesame seeds on the hamburger bun. And then I and added some little white dots on their cheeks, almost to look a little bit like freckles. I thought that'd be really cute. Just a little added detail to finish off these faces. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this watercolor piece off my board here. I'll take the tape off and trim it down to, uh, let's see, three and three quarters tall by five inches wide. So I took a half inch off each dimension and I'm putting it on this white note card that I've uh, cut and scored. It's made out of some Nina Solar White cardstock that is 110 pounds in thickness. I then rounded the corners on that watercolor piece and then I put a bunch of foam adhesive on the back and I'm going to be adhering it directly onto that card front. Keeping everything really, really simple, I'm just gonna add a little bit of an element right below that greeting took my T-square ruler and that same black pen and I drew on a dash line. Then I'm going to take a little tiny heart from the Simon Says Stamp mini heart die set and I've already pre-cut that heart so I'm just going to color it red. I'm using a barn door distress ink or distress marker to color this heart. I'm going to be covering the heart with Christmas red stickles glitter and I've just noticed in the past when I put that stickles over the top of white cardstock sometimes the white shows through so I like to just make whatever paper is beneath that glitter the same color so that it doesn't uh, show through quite as much. So I just uh, used a marker for that. You could also have just used the red watercolor if you wanted to. And then I'll just put a little foam piece right behind that heart. Use my tweezers to position that over that dash line and then press down. And now I'm gonna add those, uh, that gray, or not, it's not gray, hello. I'm gonna add that red stickles right on top to make that heart sparkle. I'm also going to add a little bit of Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen on top of these little images. You'll notice that I'm dabbing the brush down. That's because I know that any moisture is going to reactivate that color and move it around. So I'm trying to not brush the surface of the paper, but instead just dab on a little bit of that glitter, a little bit of that shimmer. So that finishes up the card today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I thought this was sort of a fun challenge to give myself to use a less expensive coloring option. And I think it turned out pretty great. I don't know that anyone would really notice that I had used less expensive paints. And it was kind of fun, a fun exercise to do. So hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next card video.
again for watching today's video. On screen right now are my three most recent videos if you want to check them out. You can catch me at my blog at kingwernerdesign.com and also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. You can subscribe in that top corner. That means that when you log into YouTube and you go to your subscription page, all of my latest and newest videos will show up right there and you won't miss any of them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another video.